Okay, really important video for Fuji X-T2 owners. New owners or those that have got one on order. Um, listen, a lot of people are going to open up their camera out of the box and then they're going to stick it in ca continuous focus mode and then uh, start to blast away. Listen, here's something really important you need to understand. I made a statement and everybody's starting to open their eyes and realize how true it is that the uh, Fuji X-T2 has just blazing fast autofocus tracking. I stated that the autofocus tracking specifically, not high ISO or, or, or you know, any other, is faster on the Fuji X-T2 than the D500. That is valid. Listen, just like your X-T2, the more complicated the camera becomes, the more it needs specific input. Um, just like a computer, I mean, the computer can do so much, and your computer is exactly like your Fuji X-T2. To get specific output, you are going to have to give it specific input. And unlike a Canon or a Sony or a Nikon, there are various modes and areas and AFC custom settings that you are going to have to learn before you pop in a battery and stick on a lens and open up the box and, you, and go out to the street or, like, try to track birds and, they're, you know you encounter some sort of frustrations like why did it miss some shots or why did this happen you need to understand that people say well there are all these complicated levels of just doing of uh, doing uh, continuous autofocus tracking of a subject and that is true and this is why it's a good thing because your Fuji X-T2 like a computer the more specific that you can make it the better the results are every camera and every computer no matter how fast it is is a stupid device okay everyone they need specific input from you they can't read your mind so you're gonna to have to set the mode correctly whether that's zone or single or whatnot you're gonna to have to set the appropriate area a lot of people pointed me to a video and it was a you know just a simple error on his part that he said he said specifically uh, my uh, uh, my Fuji X-T2 is tracking as good as my D5 and that alone should pe tell people like oh my god that's great and he said well it did miss some stuff like on shooting passing cars and uh, he admitted that he didn't have his area set correctly no nope, simple prop simple mistake you know not fully immersed into the X-T2 system um, I've seen another person uh, post something like that over on a photography board forum and uh, when I first made the statement, I said, listen, this camera is tracking, is uh, autofocusing uh, faster than the Nikon D5. Everybody said, oh, you are so full of crap. Now the wave has turned the other way. And uh, people are like, oh, my God, their eyes are opening up like owls and saying, yes, it is. But when you get your X-T2, please immerse yourself into the fact that the autofocus is insanely fast on the X-T2, but you are going to have to learn how to push the correct buttons on the camera to be very specific. It's like, why can't you just turn it on, stick it in continuous autofocus, and go ram? You know, any sort of shooting. Birds, cars, trucks, bicycles. Cameras don't work that way, and computers don't work that way. You have to set the correct autofocus mode. You need to set the correct autofocus area to be focused upon. You may have the correct mode, and you may have additionally so, very, very, very importantly, the correct autofocus custom settings, okay? Remember, you have five different uh, autofocus custom settings, including a six, which is user programmable uh, for yourself. Like, fat, it tracks erratically moving objects, or it tracks only the subject as it's moving, or it tracks something coming into scene, or it actually keeps track on the object as it goes behind obstacles. You have to be very specific with this camera. So there is a multi-tiered input required by you for your X-T2, which is stupid. Every camera, like every computer, is stupid. Without uh, uh, applications and without input, the fastest computer is no different than the fastest camera. They're all stupid devices. So you're going to have to enter in multi-tiered mode, area, also the boost on your vertical grip, okay? Boost. And custom settings, mode, area, boost, and custom settings must be set correctly. And once you do that, then the camera goes, aha, this is exactly what the person wants me to do. And when you do that, then the magic starts. You know, is this going to be a 24 or 48 hour learning curve for you? Possibly, for most people, probably faster. But, you know, once you learn it, I mean, you're going to be very, very, very happy. But just don't take the camera out of the box, slap a battery in it, 
and go out and rush out to the street and start trying to do uh, tracking action or birds in flight. Learn these specific uh, tiers of uh, input for your Fuji X-T2. And additionally so, don't be sticking your slow ass old SD card in your Fuji X-T2. You need to be buying some at least 280 megabit per second UHS-2 cards. I mean, don't nobody buys a Lamborghini and then like stick some, uh, you know, a wall-eyed, a wobberjawed is a southern expression. Wobberjawed means it's like, you know, off kilter, it's not circular. You know, you don't buy a Lamborghini and like stick messed up old uh, freaky bold tires on it and expect to so stick <laughs> some fast SD cards and they cost like the SanDisk 280, mega, 280 megabit per second cards uh, they cost uh, $62 here in the US anyway so basically two bucks a gig um, so you're gonna need those don't be sticking your old ass SD cards in there okay you're gonna get the autofocus performance, but if the camera just slows down because it's trying to buffer to your slow ass old cards, no bueno. You're gonna have to buy some fast cards if you don't have them already. The really fast cards. Not the fast cards like the 95 megabit per second cards. I mean, the really fast cards. Okay? So please understand that. Your Fuji X-T2 is no different than an advanced computer. It needs specific input. People say, a couple of people have complained. It's like, I have to be so detailed on the X-T2 as far as just doing a uh, continuous autofocus tracking. And it's like, you know, I have to input mode and area and boost and specifically AFC custom settings. It's like, well, yeah, you do have to do that, but that's a good thing. That means that your loss rate is going to go whew, way down. Keeper rate, loss rate, in other words, when you take, ram, you know, some action shots, your keeper rate, that's what everybody wants. They want higher and higher and higher keeper rates. So, got to be specific with the camera. You give it the correct input, it will give you the correct output. So, please pay attention to that. Please study it before you just go out and hit the streets or, you know, yank it out of the box, stick a battery in it, and go uh, hit the grass. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, 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 shit, crap. I've got also a video below, excuse me, of uh, a guy who was shooting boost, boost mode with an XT2. It's a video, but you can see that it's a video of various shots of like a swooping eagle and a swooping buzzard. Um, yes, I stick by my initial claim, and other people, uh, many, many other people, are now their eyes are wide open. It's like, yes, the Fuji XT2 is it's blasting fast, okay? As far as it having gigantic glass like the 300mm 2.8 or the 200mm to 500, of course it does not. And that's why every camera system is different. You know, it's not going to be the replacement camera for someone that's uh, shooting Olympics of, you know, like the ski jumper. And that person needs like an autofocus 400mm f4. The glass does not exist for that yet. We have to be practical and sensible. So check that video link below and uh, thanks. Bye.